Hey guys, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy where I teach you guys the very best tips and tricks to owning and operating your very own successful Rust server. On this channel, I do a lot of plugin reviews and tutorials to help you as the server owner become better at your job. If you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to the channel as well as turn on all notifications so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. If you take any value out of this video, make sure you smash that thumbs up for me. All right, so today's video is all about player challenges. Now, what player challenges is, is basically a scoreboard type system for your players on your server to keep track of who has done the most of whichever task it is that you want to keep track of. And we can control which tasks we're keeping track of. We'll get into that. But I also want to show you a cool feature about this plugin that maybe not everyone knows about, or at least maybe not everyone is taking advantage of. So we'll get into that in just one second. Before we get started on player challenges, if you haven't already done so, make sure you join our Discord. I'll put a link to it above me right now. I'll also put a link to it in the video description down below. At the recording of this video, there are 736 members in the Discord right now, some of which are brand new, have never ran a server before in their life. Others are extremely experienced veterans that know exactly what they're doing. There's a ton of knowledge inside this Discord, so make sure you join up if you have any questions. Also, if you'd like to support my efforts on this channel, you can check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash srtbull. You get special accesses in the Discord itself. You get your own dedicated role. You stand out amongst the rest of the members. You'll also get your name mentioned at the end of each one of the videos as a way for me to show my appreciation for the efforts that you put into my channel. All right, let's get into player challenges. So player challenges by kill you is available from the UMod website. I'm going to put a link to the plugin itself in the video description down below. So be sure to check that out. Now, a couple of cautions that I'm going to give you before we get into the actual structure of the plugin, there are some things that you need to be familiar with. If you want to be able to just toss this plugin onto your server and just have the scoreboard aspect of things, that's fine. You can do that, but you're going to want to be familiar with better chat. So if you've never seen my tutorial on better chat, make sure you click on the link in the top right hand corner right now, it shows you how to install better chat, how to create the different groups and how to work with the formatting so that the names and the titles actually show up correctly. So like I said, if you just want to use this as a scoreboard, you need to know how to operate better chat and basically just toss player challenges into your server and you're good to go. If you want to get into the advanced stuff though, the fun stuff, the cool stuff, you will need to be familiar with kits, the kits plugin, how to create kits and how to assign permissions to those kits. But don't worry, we're going to get into all of that in this video. If you want to check out my video specifically on kits, I'll put a link in the YouTube card in the top right hand corner right now and you can check that out. We're going to quickly kind of graze over some of the kits aspect of things, but you will kind of get an idea of how it's supposed to work. And then of course, as always, you're going to want to have some sort of a permissions manager. You can either use permissions manager itself, or you can use admin menu from chaos code. Either one works, but you're going to want something that you can quickly visualize and see which kits have which permissions. You'll understand a little bit more as we get into this. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is the default config file for player challenges. Now, as you can see right here, you can see there's a a bunch of different categories and these are all the different categories that are going to be kept track of on our scoreboard so animal kills arrow kills etc etc but right now i want to direct you to the bottom of this document which actually controls the different capabilities of this plugin actually before we get into the bottom of this config file i actually want to take you in game and show you what this actually looks like in case you've never seen it so once we have player challenges actually successfully installed into our server, it's very simple to see what that scoreboard looks like. So we just go into chat and type slash PC, which stands for player challenges. So if we pull that up, this is the default configuration. You can go through and change all of the text coloring. You can also change the background coloring. You can customize this to pretty much however you want it to look. But as you can see there, we've got animal kills, kills with arrows, structures built, clothes crafted, explosives thrown, and then we've also got pages going forward. It keeps track of a lot of things by default. We actually have the ability to remove these categories if we don't actually want it to be part of our scoreboard, but we'll get into that in just a second. I just wanted to show you guys what the scoreboard actually looks like from default default as soon as you install the plugin. If this is all you're going for, you can stop watching this video. You don't have to go any further into it. However, if you want to make something really cool with this plugin, stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm actually going to leave my cam off just for right now because I felt that it was blocking too much of the screen. There's a couple of details inside the config that I want to bring your attention to a couple of decisions that you have to make. Now, of course, you can go through each one of these line by line and it's going to determine what gets tracked and what doesn't. So default at line 148, ignore kills for event players, players killed. So if you have like a gun game or some sort of an, an event where players are killing each other, do you want to ignore those kills or do you want them to be tracked on this scoreboard? So ignore kills for player events. You need to decide, do you want that true or false? 
Ignore supply signal. So by default, technically a supply signal is an explosive. Do we want to keep track of how many people are throwing explosives, including supply signals? If we don't, we want to leave this at false. If you do, clearly make that true. Uh, the survey charge is not really an important aspect of it because not many people are actually using survey charges, but you can decide whether you want to include that as an explosive that wants to be tracked on the scoreboard. So you can go through and make these decisions for yourself. Now, a couple of things that I do absolutely want you to change. Line 153 by default, broadcast new challenge leaders to chat. That's this right here. As soon as somebody takes over the leader on the leaderboard or the scoreboard, do you want this displayed to chat? Typically you do. So I'm gonna change that to true. Update leaders on the scoreboard on a timer. Now, I find this strange that the developer actually put this in here saying that this is recommended to be true, and yet by default, it comes in at false. I've actually tried this in the true position. I wasn't very happy with how it performed. I found that it, so I set my timer to update the list every hour, but I was finding that at that hour point, it wasn't actually updating anything. So I've decided to leave that at false, and I am actually leaving it at false on all of my servers. The next one is the beginning of what I find really cool about this plugin and really fun. Create and use oxide groups for each challenge type. So by default, that's set to false. And for the demonstration purposes of this video, I'm gonna change this to true so that I can show you exactly what's happening. But I need to show you something first. Let's just finish up with this and I'll get back to that. Uh, update timer in hours, 168. If you have this set to false, the timer doesn't really matter. Maximum tags to display requires better chat, which is why I said that you need to know how to use better chat. I find that if you have two tags showing, it makes the name really long. So I actually changed this to one so that only one of the awarded tags from the scoreboard is actually displayed in chat. And if we go down a little bit from there, here's where you can change the actual colors of your scoreboard. I'm just gonna leave this at default for right now, but just to show you that the capability is there for you to customize this to make it your own. And before anybody asks, no, there's nowhere in there where you can put an image as a background, it's just strictly colors. So I haven't saved that config file yet because I wanna show you what my group list looks like before I make these changes. So by pulling up permissions manager, you can see currently I have two groups on this server. One is default, one is admin, pretty standard stuff. So let's see what happens when I go and save this file and actually reload player challenges. Okay, so as you can see there, I've saved my file. I've now reloaded the plugin. Let's go back in game and see what changed on the permissions manager that I think you guys are gonna find quite interesting. So now that we reloaded player challenges and I also reloaded better chat so that it regrabs that information and you'll see why in a second here, let's open up our permissions manager. So we go perms and then we go to all groups and now we can see we still have default and admin, but now we also have all of these other groups here. So we've got Hunter, Archer, Taylor, which surprisingly enough lines up with all of the different categories on the scoreboard. So why does this matter? We're going to get into that. So just bear with me just a minute. Here we are back at the config file for player challenges. Now, I wanted to show you how you can remove different categories if you don't want them to be monitored on the scoreboard. So just for testing purposes, I'm gonna go through and remove a couple of things and it's right here. Enable this challenge, it's default set to true, but if we don't want it to be on the scoreboard, we just simply change that to false. It will no longer keep track of animal kills on your server and it won't record them on the scoreboard. So I'm gonna go through and make a couple of changes to this so that we're only left with two. Basically, I'm gonna show you the example of what happens when you cut down the most amount of wood on your server, as well as collecting the most amount of ore nodes. Okay, so now that I've changed a bunch of these to false, we're no longer keeping track of them. I'm just gonna save this file and reload the plugin. And if we hop back in game and do slash PC, we should see that our scoreboard now looks a little bit different. So there we go, we have ore gathered, we have wood gathered, and I apparently forgot to take out NPC kills, but that's okay, we're gonna leave that for now. So there's no more next button up here beside the close button. Now these are the only three things that we're monitoring for our scoreboard. Okay, so now we're getting into the section where we need to know how to operate the kits plugin. I've done tutorials on that in the past, so make sure you've watched that video. I posted a link to it on the YouTube card a couple of minutes ago, and I'm gonna put a link to it in the video description down below. But for right now, I'm gonna show you how it works to create kits and how to assign a permission to that kit because the permission is what's important here. So we just need to decide what we want to be in the kit that we want to use as a reward when somebody becomes the leader on the leaderboard in each individual category. We have three categories that we're 
monitoring right now, we're only going to deal with two. So we've got the woodsman category as well as the ore collection category. So let's deal with woodsman first. So let's just say whoever's at the top of the list gets a large stack of wood and maybe a new chainsaw. All right, so in my inventory there, you can now see that I have 10,000 wood and a new chainsaw. So now let's create a kit that a winner on the scoreboard or player challenges list can actually claim. So we're just going to do slash kit add woodsman and then we're going to add the items from our inventory. So that is slash kit items. Do we want to put a cooldown on this? Do we want to put a max to this? Let's just say yes for argument's sake. Let's do a max of three. Let's do a cooldown of once every day, which is 86,400 seconds. And we also want to give it a permission. So let's call this permission woodsman is fine. It doesn't matter as long as we can make the relationship later when we're applying these permissions to these different kits available. You guys will all understand this as soon as we get to that point. Okay, so the items were copied from the inventory, the max was set to three, the cooldown was set to 24 hours, and the permission is set to kits.woodsman, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so let's move on to the ore collection prize. So in this case, we're going to give away a jackhammer. We're going to give 10,000 wood. We're going to give away 5,000 metal ore and 2,500 sulfur ore. And again, you can make these kits whatever you want them to be. I'm just showing you these as an example. You need to decide what's right for your server. So we're going to call this kit ore collector. And then, of course, we need to grab the items out of our inventory that's going to create part of this kit. We're going to add a cooldown of 24 hours, which is 86,400 seconds. We're going to put a max of three on this. So the player can only claim this to a maximum of three times. And we're going to add the permission to it called ore collector. So there we go. Items were copied. Cooldown set. Max is set. Permission is set. Perfect. We're all set. So if we go to slash kit, obviously we're not going to see any kits right there. So let's just add a couple of kits. We're going to add the woodsman that we already created. We're going to add the ore collector that we already created. Now we know these kits are available. But remember, we have permissions attached to these kits. So a default player would not be able to see these kits unless they had those permissions assigned to them, which player challenges will automatically do once they become the leader on a specified category. So let's go into our permissions manager and let's look for the two categories that are going to actually award these permissions so that the leader of that category will actually be able to claim those kits. So let's go into lumberjack first. Let's go into kits and we want to grant the permission for woodsman or the lumberjack kit. So it looks just like that. But while we're here, we're also going to do the same thing for the ore collector. So let's just go back and back and let's find the ore collector. It would make sense that it's the miner. Let's go into kits. Let's go into ore collector and we want to grant that permission. So for the miner kit, it looks just like this. We've now granted the permissions to access the kits that will automatically be granted once they're the leader on a specified category. And if you guys want to see what this looks like inside the kits data file, this is exactly it right here. So we've now created this kit called woodsman we've put our max we've put our cooldown and this is the important part right here this is the permission that's attached to this kit and you can also change a couple of other things we can put in a description here so we'll just change the description to an award for collecting the most amount of wood we can also put an image in here if we wanted to put an image that displays on the gui let's go down to the ore collector one let's do the same thing here so this is an award for collecting the most number of ore nodes cool and we just want to confirm that we actually have this permission in in place which we already know that because we've already granted the permission but I'm just showing you what this looks like from the data file side so that you understand that it can be controlled from both sides and then of course we've got the items down below that that will be placed in the player's inventory if and when they claim this kit so we can save that just to confirm the changes that we've made o dot reload kits or I know that was at the top of the screen zoom really sucks here so if we go back into the game and i do slash kits now you can see that i currently have access to both of these kits even though on the player challenges leaderboard i actually haven't done anything yet and the reason for that is it's twofold one i have owner id which automatically gives me full visibility to all the kits that are available whether i have the permissions or not or i'm in the admin group that has the permission granted to it that allows anyone that has that permission to see those same kits even though they may not necessarily have owner ID. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove myself from the group called admin and I'm also going to remove my owner ID so that I appear back in the server just as a default player would that was spawning in fresh. So before we get into actually testing the functionality of player challenges I want to tell you guys about a company called icehost.com. 
They are one of the sponsors and supporters of this channel. IcedHost.com is a group of actual game server owners that have built an amazing Rust hosting service for you, although they provide other game servers as well. If you're tired of running a local host or you're just not satisfied with your current hosting provider, give IcedHost.com a shot. I've been working with them for about a month now and I couldn't be more satisfied with my service. They have taken one of the industry leading game server managers called Pterodactyl and they've added a couple of pieces to it that make it even better for what we're using it for. While they have an incredibly easy to use and responsive server file management system, they also have an auto restart feature that will always check for the latest updates from Facepunch and Oxide every time you restart your server. So you know that your server is always up to date with the latest versions. If you pair that feature with the fact that you can pre-schedule updates, map wipes, blueprint wipes, or just straight up server wipes, you can really see how these guys have taken server management to the next level. Make sure you check them out at icedhost.com. You get 24 hours commitment free to test out the service to see if it's a good fit for you and your team. Plus, you can get 30% off your first two months of shared host services if you use the promo code SRTBULL. They also have really great deals on managed and unmanaged dedicated servers. Give IceHost a try. No obligation for 24 hours. Let them show you that they can really provide you with the service that you're looking for. Okay, so now that we're back in game and we have all permissions removed, we are essentially just like a regular default player. Let's see how things change now. So if I go to slash kits, you can now see that I don't have any kits available to me. Just to show you that I actually don't have any permissions. If I do slash perms, it says this command is reserved for admin, which I am currently not one. So let's do a couple of things. Let's collect up some ore and let's collect up some wood. So if I've set up everything correctly and I think that I have, immediately as soon as I start chopping down wood, you should see that I have become the leader on the leaderboard. So there you go. Spectre has topped the leaderboard for the most wood gathered and we don't necessarily need to keep going. Let's just go find an ore node real quick and we can test that as well. All right, we have a stone node here. There we go. Spectre has topped the leaderboard for the most ore gathered. Perfect. So now if we go slash PC, now it's going to show us as the leader for ore gathered as well as the leader for wood gathered, which is great in itself, but that's not everything that we did. We also want to make sure that we have accessibility to the kits that are awarded to the leader of each category. So if we do slash kit, now you can see that I have access to both of those kits and that functionality was all done automatically simply because I became the leader in that specific category. Another thing worth noting is now that I'm the leader in a specific category on the leaderboard, you can see that it actually says Lumberjack next to my name. Now you remember earlier, we changed the tag limitations to one instead of two. If we left it at two, it would say both of the categories that I am the leader of. Okay, so that's basically player challenges in a nutshell. Let me know down in the comment section down below if you guys are interested in using player challenges and if you're gonna use the kits aspect to it because essentially you can just run player challenges by itself and not award any kits. That's fine too. Players love seeing their name up in lights. But if you want to award them the kits, let me know what you guys think of all that in the comments down below. As promised at the beginning of the video, I told you I would show you my current list of patrons. Do you want to see your name on this list? If you do, make sure you go to patreon.com slash srtbull. I want to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons so far. Given the crazy times that we live in in the spring of 2020, imagine that somebody can take it upon themselves to pledge a donation towards my channel to help me do what I do. I cannot express my appreciation enough. I thank all of my patrons from the bottom of my heart. Okay, so that's it for player challenges. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Throw me a giant thumbs up so that the YouTube algorithm knows that you guys enjoyed the video. If you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notification bell so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. There's plenty more tutorials coming up in the very, very near future. I put out a new video every Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to check out any of the previous tutorials, make sure you click on one of the boxes on the right-hand side of the screen right now. Okay, that's it for me. I'll see you guys next Friday.